Hey, hey, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Chelsea, and I have been breastfeeding my daughter these last 10 months since I had her, and Ray nurses and is bottle fed, just depending on my availability, because I do work full time. Um, some of that work is done at home, some of it's done in the office, and some of it is even done traveling. So if you would like to see how I maximize my milk supply in order to satisfy my daughter, make sure I have enough stored in the freezer for when I'm traveling, as well as just be able to enjoy the breastfeeding process and experience with my daughter instead of being stressed out about if I'm producing enough milk, then go ahead and keep watching. All right, so I'm just gonna dive in and tell you exactly what I did to increase and maximize my milk supply. And that is, I pumped. I pumped, I pumped, and I pumped a lot. Even when I was on maternity leave, I pumped. Within the first couple weeks of having Ray, I got into a pumping routine. So that way I could start building up my freezer storage because I knew I was gonna be traveling without her very soon, as soon as I was off maternity leave. So I had to make sure that I was building that supply as soon as possible. And in turn, I think that just helped me increase my milk supply. Because from what I understand, milk production is based off of supply and demand. So I wasn't just nursing her, but I was pumping and nursing her. So definitely in that first month of having her, I feel like all I did was nurse and pump and nurse and pump. It was a lot. So what did that look like exactly? Well, we follow the moms on call method of feeding and scheduling your baby's routine. And you can see my experience and my review of that right here in this video. I will link it down below as well. And in that method, in the beginning, you are feeding your baby every three hours. So the way that looked was I would feed Ray around 9 a.m. in the morning, and then I wouldn't feed her again until noon. And so I would pump at about 10.30. And then I would do that again. So I would feed her at noon and then I would pump again around 1.30 and then I would feed her at three. But then between three and until I would go to bed, I wouldn't have as much of a milk supply then and it just seemed like overkill. So I wouldn't pump again until right before I went to bed, which was at that time around 11 p.m. And I'm not gonna really talk about sleeping. Um, at this point, Ray wasn't sleeping through the night, but she was sleeping through the night by six weeks old. So this is just based off of the feeding schedule. I'm not really gonna go into too much detail about the uh, sleeping schedule because I've made videos on that already and you can watch those if you check out the description box below. So in that first month of having Ray, I was pumping three times a day at least. It was basically three times a day was what I would shoot for every day. And this worked for me because I was on maternity leave and my whole life revolved around feeding her. So I was home all day, I was able to do this. But I also understand that that pumping schedule won't work for everyone. But for those of you who can give that amount of time and patience to pumping, it will pay off because you will be able to increase your milk production as well as build up a freezer supply if that's what you're looking to do. When I went back to work full time just six weeks after having Ray, I had already built up more than enough of a freezer storage of milk to give to Ray while I was traveling overnight. And guys, that was so empowering for me as a mom to know that my daughter was gonna have milk to enjoy even when I wasn't there, when I was away traveling. That was just super empowering as a mom. So I think because I started with a consistent pumping routine very early on, right after having Ray, it signaled to my body to make a lot of milk and almost to the point of overproduction which can be uncomfortable, but I was so grateful every day to be able to produce a lot of milk. Um, this helped to ease my mind anytime I had to travel for work because I always knew I was gonna have enough milk for her even when I wasn't there. Um, I even went on a eight day girls trip when she was just five months old and we had plenty of milk that whole, that whole week in a day to give her while I was gone. Okay, I don't, want you guys to think that it's always just been easy for me to produce milk because it definitely hasn't. I wanna share with you a time when my milk supply significantly dropped and I thought I was gonna to have to stop breastfeeding. So after I went on this girl's trip to Europe, I got back and my milk supply like tanked. And 
I was really bummed because I brought my pump to Europe. I hauled that thing all over with me and it was a pain. And I was dedicated to pumping all throughout the day the same amount of times I would feed her during the day or pump at home. So I wasn't really off my feed or pumping schedule when I was in Europe. I was really trying to be dedicated to it and make sure I was drinking a lot of water and all that stuff that you hear you're supposed to be doing when you're pumping. You know, I was eating enough calories, all that stuff. Trust me, I was eating enough calories in Europe. So why did my milk supply tank? Well, when I was in Europe, I got sick on the very first day of our trip and it was just a cold. However, I knew I couldn't really take a lot of medicines because I, I know that cold medicines can dry you up when you're breastfeeding. So I started, you know, like uh, I was trying to avoid medicines. So instead I decided to down peppermint tea like it was going out of style. <laughs> I drank so much hot peppermint tea while I was in Europe. And there was maybe one or two days where the cold got so bad that I needed something to help with my symptoms. So I did take a little bit of um, cold medicine um, but that was midway through the trip and I didn't notice anything at that point but then I was still downing peppermint tea like crazy I'm telling you guys I like went through two boxes while I was there plus I brought home a box plus I was stopping and getting uh, peppermint tea at Costa in um, London every time I saw it so anyway I was drinking a lot of peppermint tea and by the time I got home I realized like, wow, I really am like really decreasing with my milk supply. And it wasn't until I was talking about this on my Instagram that one of my Instagram friends told me that peppermint tea dries up your milk supply. And that made so much sense <laughs> because as soon as I stopped drinking peppermint tea, two days later, I noticed my milk supply going up, but it was going up slowly. It was nowhere near where I wanted it to be, where it was before the trip. So what did I do to get my milk supply back up to producing enough to satisfy Ray, but also to build up my milk freezer storage? I pumped, I pumped and I pumped and I pumped again and again and I pumped and I pumped. I just would pump halfway in between feeding Ray, which at this point I was feeding her about every four hours. So I would just pump every four hours, but in between when I was feeding Ray. So two hours pump, then the next two hours nurse, then the next two hours I would pump, but not through the night. Except for two nights, I did do some power pumping sessions. And if you're unfamiliar with what power pumping is, I can link um, a video down below on how to power pump, but it's essentially you pump a lot in like a short amount of time, like 10 minutes you pump and then you take a break and then you pump again. And anyway, it's power pumping. You do it a lot in a short amount of time. And within that week of just cutting peppermint tea out of my diet again and um, power pumping and just pumping a lot, I was able to rebuild my supply all the way back to satisfying Ray who was at this point drinking about 32 ounces of milk a day and then I started to produce enough to store away into the freezer now we are 10 months into this breastfeeding journey and I have well over 150 ounces stored up in our freezer and that's with having taken other trips for work um, and I definitely don't pump as much as I did in the beginning and I definitely don't power pump or pump like every four hours or whatever. So what does it look like now? So currently I'm just pumping every morning when I wake up and I usually wake up around 5 a.m. and I pump for 10 minutes. And this one helps to ease the discomfort of going the whole night without, you know, nursing or pumping. So I'm really like sore and engorged. And it helps me to continue to build my freezer supply as well as be able to nurse Ray when she wakes up at 7 a.m. Because usually in the morning, my milk production is just a little bit better. So I have plenty to pump as well as nurse Ray when she wakes up at 7 or 7.30. On the weekends, sometimes I will sleep in till Ray wakes up. So in that case, I usually pump the night before at around 
10 or 11 whenever I go to bed. So that way I'm not like so engorged because I can't really go much more than like eight hours, eight or nine hours without pumping or nursing. And just for reference, if I'm pumping in the morning, I can usually get about eight to 10 ounces of milk. But if I'm pumping at night, I usually get around five to six ounces before I go to bed. So my current pumping schedule is my schedule. I don't expect it to work for everyone. I don't expect everyone to want to wake up early like I do, but I just wanted to share it with you guys so that maybe it could give you an idea of, as to how you can really maximize the amount of milk you're producing. So in my experience, pumping has been the number one thing that has made a difference in increasing and maximizing my milk supply. I have tried other, I've tried some supplements. I've tried, you know, making sure I drink a ton of water. Um, but for the most part, pumping for me has been not necessarily the easiest, but it's just, I just know if I pump a lot, I will produce more. That's just my experience. I don't know if that works for everyone, but I hope it does because then I could just say, hey, just go pump and you'll produce milk. But I know it's probably not like that for everyone. And I wanna be respectful of everyone's like experience. Um, I don't say this as a way of like, this is how to do it. I'm just sharing my experience so that I can hopefully help somebody else out there who is wondering what they can do to increase their milk supply and just maximize what they are producing and what they're able to produce. And I know pumping takes so much time and energy. Like it's just all consuming sometimes, really. Like I'm just constantly like formulating in my head how much time I can pump and how much I can produce in order to supply enough milk for this next trip or whatever. But it's so worth it, you guys. It's so worth it. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so that you can be the first to know when I upload my next video, which will be all about my hacks for breastfeeding and pumping, especially as a working mom. Until then, check out these videos right here. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.